Um, they also work for the government, work for industry, business, NGOs, nonprofits, and on the social service group. When we, when I divided this up, I thought this was interesting. Uh, when you divide up the groups and you ask them who worked with communities and who did not, thankfully, ethnobiologists, most of them said they work with communities. Ecologists. Uh, a lot of them said they don't work with communities. Uh, same with molecular scientists and biology, kind of even out, I guess. But I thought this was interesting how they claimed that they don't work with communities. So we asked so the scientists to define what community was. And usually, most people said they, you know, if they're working in a field, they let the community members decide. Uh, who's part of the community. This is kind of standard anthropological research. You ask the villagers or who lives in this specific area, things like that. Um, we also had a lot of ecologists in our survey, so they of course said ecological factors, you know, what the environment looks like, the landscape, who's living there, that sort of thing. I also thought maybe dealing with ecologists I mean, there's community level of analysis, so they might not be human populations we're talking about, but perhaps animals or plants. <laughs> not sure. Um, I'm not a species, so whatever you're more comfortable with. <laughs> and also, people talked about uh, specialists, specialized groups, and how that played a major, major factor in who they deem part of the community or not. And people had, of course, different perceptions of what a community was. People are playing different roles. Uh, they're researchers, they're workers, they're local participants in their own communities. They participate in overseas and in their fieldwork communities. And so we had various responses. I put some quotes up. One says, my research community is my researchers around me. So, this person probably identifies more with working in a laboratory, maybe, or working at their institution. Another person said, I think of my community as a network of individuals with whom I happen to connect. So this person thinks more than network. Uh, people, everyone you know is part of your community. So we also asked, how do you define giving back? And some of the criteria people said they used most were um, professional standards, this motivated people to give back, and also the, um, a lot of the ecologists and biologists said uh, their personal beliefs. They have, we asked if they had a code of ethics that they use, and they mark yes, and they say it was my personal beliefs. So, uh, all right. But people usually have this idea of giving back as a, a they're sharing their knowledge, sharing their expertise. Most, most of these people are academicians, so this kind of goes with the goes with the job description. People also talk about their service to the university, to their departments, to their school, their local people, either with local high schools or uh, grade schoolers. And they talk about collaboration, collaboration with other departments within their university. They talk about collaboration with people in the field, with hiring local people, uh, all sorts of different collaborative networks. So, so some more quotes. I like to use quotes. Giving back means providing value that people in a common community actually want. This was a key feature in a lot of the responses. So instead of trying to do something without you know, uh, having the feedback from the community, input from the community, uh, you should ask the community what they want first. Another person said, making sure my research serves a broader good. So in this sense, giving back is not just doing something for your own research, but trying to put it in a broader scope, the broader picture. Um, Having dealt with bacteria quite a bit, <laughs> I think this person was talking about their community of bacteria. Again, I'm not a speciesist, whoever you're more comfortable with. You don't have to deal with humans, you can deal with bacteria. 
Uh, hopefully they're out of plaguing the bacteria after each experiment. For the benefit of humans, you're not really benefiting bacteria. But, how about humans? Another person said, taking information from the discipline of botany and helping the public understand science as a process, how plants can enrich their lives. And a lot of people wrote this. This person wrote it a little more elegantly. Um, we can take things from science, from botany, and we can help the public understand what we're doing in the whole process. It's very complex. It's a beautiful process. And hopefully we can show people that plants uh, can enrich their lives. A lot of people mentioned taxpayers as giving back. And I guess I, maybe these people have an SF for NIH grant. You know, they're receiving public money. And this is, deals with an ethical issue. You say you're going to do the research, and you do it. Uh, this is more of an ethical consideration for giving back. And a lot of people also said giving back means helping the community that has helped you. Kind of the golden rule. So, we also asked, what's an ideal way to give back? There's a lot of confusion on this. Yeah. People don't know. Uh, we had a few really great responses, and we're going to try to publish, write that up, and give those out to people. But overall, people would say, I don't think there is any ideal way. There are a lot of good ideas, but we're not sure what really works. Nothing strikes me as ideal. And other people would say, quote, it would be easier if there was a program created with this purpose. And this caught our attention because Cassandra Quaid is trying to start a program. Uh, the Bio Biocultural Diversity Conservancy. Conservancy. CBC. I already started with CBC. <laughs> um, and this would represent people from all over the world uh, who ethnobiologists are anyone to work with and help us give back to communities. She's run into problems too, trying to give back to communities. And people talk about problems that arise. Usually people talk about there's just not, not enough time. I have 50 million things to do, I can't do one more thing. Uh, it seems to be universal. Also, finances. Are you going to get enough money? Can you give money to the local people or not? What do they expect money from? This is always an issue. How to deal with finances. Also, uh, length of time until a resource can be utilized. This is a major problem for natural products, at least. There's the initial research period, and then it takes years for anything to maybe come out, come out of it. People also complain about little follow through. You start a project, and who's going to finish it? You plant a tree, and somebody tears it up. Or, you know, there's all these little things. Uh, start something, you've got to follow through. And then there's that. A few things about uh, suspicion of official people, I just call them official people, but government officials or health people who come in, especially if you're working in a field work situation in a different country, uh, you know, there's a bit of suspicion of what they want. And a few people said that local scientists in other areas are resentful of people coming in, scientists coming in. And they also talked about corruption bureaucracy, a lot of bureaucracy, trying to get permits and things, and lack of trust as a foreign scientist going into a field work situation. So remember that pygram. Yeah. Um, if you notice the nationalities, 76% uh, are American, North American, and a lot of people are not working in the US. I mean, they are, but they're also working in South America. They're working in Asia, Africa, Australia. And this is a major shift. Uh, you have lots of people going from one culture to another. Lots of scientists. Maybe they have ecological training. Even if you do, it's still hard to go live in another culture. Um, maybe that's some of the resentment and some of the lack of trust that makes giving back difficult. We also ask people if they had heard of the CBD convention of biological diversity. And I was very interested to know the ethnobiologists, they all said yes or they left it empty. But um, <laughs> someone said no. And the sociologists, they would heard of it. Ecologists, uh, they've been dealing with natural 
resources. So uh, <coughs> it's kind of mixed up. We need to do a statistical analysis on this. But uh, I thought it was interesting that a lot of people have not heard of the Convention on Biological Diversity. And we thought maybe this is one way to get the word out to different people about how to use natural resources. If you have a molecular scientist who's dealing with plants and crop genetics, uh, they, they need to know about the Convention on Biological Diversity and where those plants come from, where the DNA comes from, where those natural resources originate. So in conclusion, scientists have many different uh, ways of defining giving back. They work in different roles, and they they have many different communities. One person says that I have, I have feel an obligation to make my academic path easier for those that come behind me. This person isn't just thinking of passing down knowledge, but they're also thinking about um, the future, changing the field, I think, uh, in general. And giving back also differs in meaning, not just like communities, but people are giving their expertise, they're being available for local people, and they're listening to and recognizing local needs, both in their where they live and in field work abroad. And one quote said, work with the community to help them see how your research or data can be used to their benefit. So don't just do a research plan, but actually show people how to use your research. So hopefully we will disseminate these results, do some more statistical analyses in depth, and we could extend this to try to facilitate giving back endeavors in the future. So thank you very much uh, to Innsbruck for Survey Monkey, uh, to the Open Science Network for getting me here from France, and uh, Joanne Stover, and she was very nice at the DSA conference last year. And a big thanks to everyone who took the survey.